This time on the Growing Mechanic, we're ditching the drums and doing discs on the Triumph TR7. thinking why bother to upgrade? Drum brakes were good enough for the front of muscle cars throughout the 60s and into the 70s and have been on the back of most cars for decades. But disc brakes do have a couple of good features. They're much better at getting rid of heat so they cool down quicker and you can apply them harder and for longer. You also, unlike standard Triumph rear drum brakes, get a much better handbrake. And last but not least, they look cool. All the cool cars have rear disc brakes. So this is the old drum brake setup. It's kind of fairly simple. The shoes pivot here and are pushed apart by a hydraulic cylinder here. They spread and the shoes come out. They grip the inside of the brake drum which sits on the outside around it, which is driven by the drive shaft. So here are the parts we're going to need to do this job. Firstly, we're going to need the fitting kit. And we're going to need some rear discs and pads for an MGF or TF. Brake calipers, carriers and handbrake cable mounts. Handbrake cable. We need this fitting off the end of a handbrake lever. Some brake fittings. And I'm cho choosing to replace the propulsioning valve. More of that later. So one of the first jobs I need to do is reduce the diameter of this flange here. Now, if you have a friend or a colleague or someone you know who's got a lathe or a machine shop and can do this professionally, I would recommend it wholeheartedly. It is a painful operation to remove it down by yourself, by hand, even with an angle grinder with the car going, it takes forever. Let's get the half shaft out and the old brakes out the way. With the back plate removed, I've cleaned up the mounting surface on the end of the axle and it's ready to take the new adapter plate. Fits on like so. And we're going to use the uh, original back plate bolts to keep it in place. And now we refit the axle shaft.
time to fit the disc and caliper. This goes on easy enough. I'll just use some wheel nuts to retain it. The instructions do say you can drill and tap screw threads through these holes and use disc retaining screws to, to do that, but it really isn't necessary. And so for the first stage, that's it. Now I've just got to do exactly the same to the other side and make them match. So moving under the car now, we need to reconnect the handbrake cables and the hydraulic lines. Well, or rather, make all new ones. So the first thing it does say in the instructions is that the handbrake bracket will foul the suspension. So we're going to need to modify that slightly. And it does tell you how to do it in the instructions. It tells you to put a 20 degree bend, approximately, in the brake. Uh, handbrake carrier and that does seem to do the job there you go it clears the suspension and should still pull the handbrake on so it's starting to get the car plumbed up I've installed some copper brake lines to the original hose. I've mounted a T-piece where the handbrake used to go. There's the handbrake pivot point. And I've run the pipework as per the instructions out to the calipers. I've just got the last fitting to do. 
So let's make that and then we can start running some fluid through. So it's a couple of evenings later and we're back on the job, touching with the hydraulics at the moment. So, this is the original hydraulic pressure regulator. It makes sure that the right amount of pressure, right amount of fluid goes to the front brakes and to the rears. So the rear brakes don't lock up before the fronts do. Unfortunately, I don't know whether this is gonna cope with a rear disc conversion and whether the balance is going to be correct. So what I've bought is a manual valve. And this should be able to do the job. I can adjust it to make sure that I don't have any problems with the rear brakes locking up prematurely and it should be a bit safer. Also being less than 40 years old, it should be a little bit more reliable and I can trust it a little bit more. What I'm going to do is remake this line and I'm going to put in it the valve and that should work perfectly. For the front brakes I'm just going to use a standard T-piece to have them working off full pressure. So that should do it. Now I just need to bleed all the air out and see if we can get a pedal. We're making progress now. So the handbrake line is fitted at the caliper. I've chosen to run it across the axle, connect them at the middle, up the side of the petrol tank, and it's going to run across to the middle. Now this is because the MGF handbrake cables are a lot longer than the original one, but they do seem to tuck up quite nicely. When the car's on the floor, we need to recheck it. I've used a small cable tie, loosely, to uh, hold the 
cable up near the petrol tank. Hopefully, that should keep things secure. Now, as the original system ran a single cable, there was only one hole in this centre brace. So the instructions say, drill two 13mm holes. There's not a lot of clearance up there, so it's been quite tricky to do. But now, we've got two 13mm holes, and we can feed the handbrake cables into the holder. I'm going to give them a quick coat of paint so they don't rust, and move on from there. So the last connection on the handbrake is to connect the ends of the cables to the bottom of the lever. And for this, you get a supplied adapter kit as part of the handbrake kit. This is the part you get with the kit, and it allows this piece here to be fitted onto here, and then we can screw that into the bottom of the lever. And this piece here takes the cables. So there it is, it's the handbrake lever actually mounted in situ where it's supposed to be. All the handbrake cables are in. Fluid lines are run. I think we're good for a test. One issue I had when bleeding the brakes was I couldn't get the air out of the rear caliper in the normal way. I ended up unbolting the caliper, rotating it to its normal vertical position, the way it would be found on an MGF, to get the air out. It wasn't difficult, but it did make things slightly more tricky, and it's something to consider if you're doing the installation yourself. Just to support the brake pipes so that they don't get brittle and break, I made a little bracket up. It's just a 90 degree piece of steel painted black to support everything, the valve and the T-piece. Hopefully that should work. in and it's working. Now it's time to sit down and discuss how much it's all cost and whether it was worth it. So that all happened a few months ago and in the time it's taken me to sort out the video footage and edit it all together uh, with lots of problems with editing software this time unfortunately I've been able to form some opinions and have some comments on whether I think it's all worth it. So firstly the brakes work really well and the handbrake is very effective. Um, it sounds daft to think that the handbrake was a big deal, but you just couldn't rely on the old one to stop the car rolling away. It's not automatic, it doesn't have a park mode, um, and it's nice now to slam the handbrake on, job done. The foot brake, it really does stop the car hard. The downside is because of the larger size of the pistons, um, there's a lot more foot pedal travel. The brake pedal travels down a lot further before it actually grips up. Um, and that's a little bit disconcerting. Um, I still don't feel that I've got all the air out, but the next thing I need to do is to sort out the long travel, which involves a different master cylinder. This is quite a common thing. For a long time, people have been using four piston calipers on the front of Triumph TR7s, 
and to overcome the longer pedal travel there. They used the master cylinder from a Sherpa van. Now these are becoming rare and hard to get hold of and people want a lot of money for them. Fortunately, I've managed to get hold of one at still at sensible price. I've rebuilt it and that'll be the next video. Um, but in the meantime, the brakes do work really well. So now let's talk about cost. So the brake caliper brackets cost me about £100. I've spent a little over £100 on, the two, on buying two brake calipers that actually work and have all the brackets and fittings on. Um, I've spent about £50 on the discs and pads themselves. Um, the handbrake cables were about £20. And I think there's about another £20 worth of minor fittings, the brake part, the fittings for the brake hoses. Um, so all in all, it's certainly not a cheap conversion. Um, it's not something you can just throw together in an afternoon. But by and large, I'm happy with it. I think it's good. Um, it does look good. It certainly feels better than the drums. I have a lot more confidence in it. And it's definitely a worthy upgrade. Um, so let's get the um, different mask cylinder on and go from there. But in the meantime, thanks for watching. I hope you uh, subscribe and you can keep up with any more further updates on the Triumph and any other projects I've got going on. And uh, see you next time. Thank you.